The Great Western Railway Society's Didcot Railway Centre is the only place in the world where you can see genuine sections of Brunel's broad gauge track. They also have a broad gauge turntable. In addition, they have a short section of pipe from Brunel's failed atmospheric railway. This is the one that's the larger circumference. It was later replaced with one with a narrow circumference to make creating the vacuum easier. Brunel's broad gauge had a distance of seven foot naught and a quarter inch between the inside of the rails, whilst what became known as standard gauge was four foot eight and a half. Also, the design of the rail itself was different. Brunel used what he called bridge rails. These used about the same amount of metal as the standard gauge, which were known as, as bullhead. This is an example of what was known as transfer sheds. With the two different gauges, locomotives couldn't use the same track, therefore it became essential to transfer passengers and goods between trains, and this was done in transfer sheds. The broad gauge locomotive here is Firefly, a replica made in 2005. Brunel's bridge rails, hollow beneath, were less prone to layering. This was not an infrequent occurrence with the poor quality of the metal at the time in the bullhead of standard gauge rails. Signalling trains on the early railways was carried up by railway police. They were known as officers. This is an example of a box they would use to shelter in. Later, disc and crossbar signals were used, and these remained on the railway until the change of gauge in 1892. This is a reconstruction of the early telegraph system that was used. Not only was the gauge and the rail types different, but also the method of constructing the track. It was known as bulk road. That's because the longitudinal sections of timber ran beneath the rails themselves, with fewer but regular transverse sections. In standard gauge track, it used actually more wood, with many more transverse sections, and none actually running deliberately beneath the rails themselves. To solve the gauge problem, sometimes a third rail was laid at four foot eight and a half, giving what was called mixed gauge. Little remains of broad gauge, except that you find strainer posts for fences were often made from old bridge rails from the broad gauge. The only remaining genuine locomotive is known as Tiny, and she survives at the Roman Museum at Buckfast Lee on the South Devon Railway. <laughs>